Good morning, everybody. So, today I'm currently in uh, Rorschach. And behind me is the yellow Vanderweg sign. Because today I'm starting a new long distance hiking tour. Uh, that one being number four, the Alp Alpine Panorama Vag, Alpine Panorama Trail. So, yeah. 510 kilometers, 29 etapas. But yeah, should be fun. I'm going through parts of Switzerland I've never actually been through before. So yeah. Don't worry, I'm still planning on finishing the Jura Hörwag Eurocrest Trail at some point this year. But at the minute, weather and logistics is making that tour a little bit difficult to finish off. So yeah. Thought I'd start a new little project and uh, finish that, finish the JCT when I can. So yeah, here it is, enjoy. Alrighty, so just into the first couple of kilometers now. Um, one thing, I'm not too sure how much sort of my style of hiking filming I'm going to be able to do with like all the third person shots. Uh, reason being is because this uh, etapa is very much in towns and uh, so on and so forth. So yeah, a little bit busy, but I'll see what happens. And it's too early to tell. I mean, I'm only two kilometers in out of 18, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. So, just right there, right by the lake shore, is where I started. Current distance, just under three and a half kilometers. So yeah. So the plan is to basically go up and around this big hill here and then down towards a little village called uh, Trogen or yeah to Trogen and from there public transport home yeah
So, progress is progressing progressively. Now, very early on in this tour, I did my first cantonal border crossing. So, I've gone from St. Gardle into Oppenzell at Osterhorde. Now, this is the first of 10 canton crossings as the Alpine Panorama Trail, Alpine Panorama Vag, crosses through 10 cantons. Those cantons being uh, St. Gallen, Oppenzell at Osterhorden and Innerhorden, two of the six Hald cantons in Switzerland. Uh, Schweiz, Zug, Luzern, Bern, Freiburg, Havad, and Genf. So, yeah, effectively, this route is on the opposite end of the Mittelland in comparison to the Jura Hörwag. So, yeah, I get to see the Jura Hörwag from a different angle as well as the uh, Alps. So, yeah. Oh, this is a nice day. The only thing I've forgotten is just the summer heat. I mean, it's, today's nice 21, 22 degrees, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed I should be in the mountains if we get another potential major heat wave. So yeah, it's all for me for the time being. So, one thing that I have actually forgotten to mention is that the stretch that I'm walking now is actually a detour. Uh, the actual route is down behind me there. Now, yeah, this is the closest thing I could find. And that closure is, I don't really know how long it's been going on for, but it's been going on for a while, according to the uh, Swiss Mobility website. So yeah, just thought I'd uh, chuck that little bit of info out. Okay, so I guess I better explain why, why one of my legs is going to be a little bit damp. The reason being is that there's a bridge in the shop before this one. And uh, as I was taking my tripod off the bridge from where I mounted it, one of the legs fell off, fell into the river that we saw earlier. And uh, well, I basically ditched my gear tried chasing after it and um, was not successful. So I am gutted that has happened, not because of the damage to my tripod, but to the fact that I've broken rule number one of being in the outdoors, which is leave no trace. Granted stuff like this occasionally happens. You know, I try to minimize my impact and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I at least, I tried going after it, you know, but with the flow of the river and by the time I actually got into the riverbed and managed to get to where I'd seen it fall in, it probably went all the way down. So, yeah. The good news is, is I managed to jerry-rig my tripod so I can continue to film. The bad news is, is, well, I've broken the rule of leave no trace. I am very gutted that that has happened. I, I am truly gutted. Now I'm just chatting for chatting's sake, so uh, yeah. I'm just gonna continue, try and not let this uh, go too far behind me. So, fingers crossed, hopefully someone sees it and can collect it and put it in a bin or something. But yeah, well, we'll see what happens.
Alrighty, so um, behind me is the town of Haydn. Passing through here was an adventure in and of itself. Reason being is that the USB C cable that I need to charge my phone, well, gave up the ghost. It uh, sadly deceased on me. So my phone running low on power. So I had to find a shop that sold USB cables. Thankfully there was a supermarket there that I could use. And uh, yeah, got the cable. I wanted to find out that I didn't think I didn't think the cable the cable that I just bought was working. Turned out I was using the wrong end of it. So yeah, cable worked itself out in the end. And then I ended up walking in a circle because the route that I needed was directly outside the supermarket and I just, uh, yeah, didn't realize it. So yeah, oh, fun and games. I love our adventures. <laughs> Alrighty, so almost at the top of the first major climb on this hike, the uh, Kajenspitz. So yeah, 80 meters to go, and then I'm finished. Then it's gonna be downhill most of the way, and then a slight 100 meter ascent to get to Trogen, and then done for the day. Alrighty, so I've made it to the Kajenspitz, the uh, first major ascent of this hike, so yeah. Um, not this hike, but this trail. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take a few minutes here to just really enjoy the view. Because um, I think it's around here where you can see five different countries, because on the other side of the lake that you've just seen, uh, Bodensee, is Germany. Down that way somewhere is Liechtenstein. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm in Switzerland, so that's three. And you've also got Austria as well, so that's four. I think the fifth might be Italy, I think. 
because I know from, yeah, it's just something on a sign that I saw that was uh, Feu, uh, Feu Landes, uh, Aussichtspunkt. So yeah, five countries, because I know on the, um, from Sentis, which is a mountain I'll be passing by, I think in, not this, not the next to topper, but the one after. Um, you, when you get to the summit there on a really clear day, I think you can see something like six or seven different countries. Um, uh, I think it, I think it's six countries. I think seven, maybe. I don't know. It's been a while since I've been there, but yeah, six or seven countries. So yeah, this hill, anyway, this section of it really reminds me a lot of when I lived back in Bath. Um, not um, Kelston Round Hill. I mean, the, the gradient on it is almost one to one identical. So yeah, lots of happy memories up there, especially uh, when I wrecked. I mean, it still works, but it's very much got, still got like scorched, scorch marks in it. When I used my MSR stove to try and have a fondue night one night to watch the sunset. Um, yeah, it uh, way, way too hot. I ended up with a soggy lump of something at the bottom of that thing, but yeah. It took me a good while to clean. <laughs> it took me a very long time to clean, so yeah. But anyways, I, I digress, but yeah, the, the hill and everything, like the, the grass. The view's different, but just the way it looks just really reminds me of, of Kelston Round Hill, so yeah. So, way off there in the distance is Sentis, which you can see six different countries from on a clear day. Um, I've been up there once as a kid. Um, I didn't climb it. Uh, family and I took the uh, took the lift up, which in and of itself is quite fun. And uh, yeah, I one day would very much like to climb it, but uh, first of all, I have to wait for the snow to melt. Secondly, I'll have to see if I actually get round to it. I mean, um, it's more of a really steep mountain hike, so it's doable. But uh, yeah, I've got a lot on my plate this summer, so I'll have to I'll have to wait and see, see how it goes.
Alrighty, so just on the outskirts of Reetobel jetzt. Reetobel now, so uh, yeah, not too far to go according to the map. I've got hour and a half, two hours to go before I finish, so yeah, nice easy day. Alrighty, so Reetobel has been successfully navigated. The only thing I would say is that the stretch of path that I'm currently on does involve a 300 meter shooting range. So um, if you are gonna hike this, check the dates. Um, I mean, normally shooting happens on a Wednesday and Saturday. So between I think like nine and five or something. I'm not too, I don't really remember the times exactly, but uh, some Saturdays and some Wednesdays between the months of May and September is, um, is shooting so yeah just uh, heads up if you are gonna hike this so I am currently on the range behind the trees there is the shooting stand 300 meters away, give or take. And then over here, out there, just by those, by that, by uh, the small tree, just here, is the actual targets. So, So that village directly on the other side of the valley there is Trogen and uh, yeah just a 200 meter ascent from when I get to the bottom of this descent and then I'm done for the day so I reckon the next 45 minutes to an hour and I should be should be calling it quits so yeah happy days Alrighty, so I'm not too far from the end now. Another click to go, give or take. Uh, about 100 and something meters of elevation gain to go. Um, I am, however, going to stop filming from here on in, just as I am approaching civilization. And uh, yeah, kind of slowly want to be uh, making tracks so I'll update you when I get back to when I get to the train so yeah that's it for the moment alrighty so today is done one stage down 28 to go Boy, this, uh, this has been a fun one it's definitely a lot more different than um, hiking the uh, the Uruhuerberg. So uh, yeah, but, uh, I'm excited to see what the future brings, and can't wait to start this uh, start this journey uh, to continue this journey. So yeah.